Personally, I found it very inspiring, both from a professional point of view and also from a personal point of view as well. And we've entitled the document A Dialogue of Equals. We call it A Dialogue of Equals because that's what it has to be. If it's going to be about meaningful engagement, if you want to get people around the table, if you want people to really take heed of your messages, you have to create a dialogue of equals. You have to make them feel valued and make them understand that they too have something to contribute to the engagement. You have to just be a little bit humble and accept you don't know stuff and ask people who do know. Um, I've never had a door yet slammed in my face. You know, there's a reason why this elderly black woman would like to speak to someone black, but will never say it because culturally she's been taught not to. But when, when I went in the little room in the back and the little, I went to the little the barber shop, I went to the hair salons, I went to the churches, I went to the community centers. That's where I asked people, what do you want? And guess what I found out? They wanted a black person sitting in front of them. And as black people, I say this all the time out in here, that we can ill afford to swallow whole what is called cultural. We can ill afford to swallow that because there's poison in the cookies. And the only way to get the poison out of the cookies is not someone from the outside looking in, but those who are living in this to be able to look at themselves and assess it with a level of dignity, a level of safety that perpetuates a sense of well-being and healing. I thought it was innovative, it was um, motivational. It was everything that I'd expected. Does the NHS make itself hard to reach for some communities? Yes or no? No talking, instant reaction. Stafford, my friend, it's a sea of yeses. No one dared show a no. There's a difference between engagement and consultation resonated throughout the day and um, that for me was, was quite a shift from what has been happening before. So it's about not just ticking the box, um, it's about actually understanding. I think we, all, we can all acknowledge that there are so many range of different communities and the health service tends to be homogeneous and have one approach to trying to meet the needs of all communities and very often fails to engage with people because of language, because of culture, because of identity, because of exclusion. I'm going to take a leaf out of um, battlefield medicine here. Um, in, the, in battlefield medicine, you triage injured soldiers. Um, you don't go for who's shouting the loudest. You go for who's not making any noise at all. I'm going away energised because I can actually go and deliver training, but I come away thinking, is it going to make a difference? But today, not only was I fed, but I've met and I've networked with other people as well. So I think it can make a huge difference. So let's try some more do. Bahot shukriya. Bahot shukriya. Shabash, that means well done. If Odu doesn't apply in the area where you are, one of my colleagues in the ambulance service in Lincolnshire, and he tells me in the Boston area, they've got a significant Portuguese community. Change it to six phrases of Portuguese. If you want Yorkshire, I can teach you that. It'll take years, though, to understand that. Thank you very much. It was uh, showing us that there are real things that we can do here and now that will make a difference to the communities and to the patients uh, and the, the, the black communities as well.